This is one chapter of the 12, separated and posted. It was taken from my main one hour and a half tutorial, hyphen documentary video, to make it easier for crafters to use. If you don't mind watching the whole thing, then click on the link in the description and the pinned comment. Chapter 7. The Middle and Handle. The Two Wings of the Hawk. Capítulo 7. El Centro y el Mango. Las Dos Alas del Halcón. Before making any bundle pieces, we need to find and measure the coarse middle point, the center. Without it, we can't get the needed numbers. Remember, both sides of the bow needed to be exactly equal in power and thickness. The actual length of the bow is not measured from the tips of the thin extensions, but from the surfaces of the thick ones. That is because the string determines the pulling points, and the string sits on the corner made by the wide surface and the extended bamboo on both sides. From now on, we will call these spots as string points. By extending the two tops and twisting the pieces together, some of the original length has been lost. For me, that has reduced its length to match exactly the length of my chest and the tip of my index finger instead of the middle one, while having my arm extended. So you can't go with theoretical maths and expect the middle to be at 60 centimeters. You can use a measuring tape and calculate the middle point the normal way. But because of the twisting, this might become a bit confusing to some. Plus, let's say that you are in a situation that there are no measuring tools around. Something extremely useful you could do is to learn your body in the following way. I found key lengths on my body and I can craft an accurate ruler anywhere. Examples. This is my centimeter and this is my inch. One way is to try and measure what's the middle by the eye and cut a stick that you don't need to that size. Three possibilities can come out from that. Either the piece is slightly shorter, slightly longer, or you are that lucky and you found the middle already. Either result, do the following steps. Place and align its one end at one of the string points. Mark softly whatever distance it reaches onto the bow. Then repeat this process from the opposite side. Now you have marked a much smaller area in the middle that you can divide into two halves by the eye. But my favorite way is the following one. Get a rope, place its end on a string point and pull it tightly to reach the other end. Cut it there and now you have a rope that matches exactly the length of your bow. Get both ends of the rope, place them together and either tape them or just hold them with your fingers aligned on a string point. Put your finger in that big loop and run it across its length until it reaches its limit and stops you. This divides its length into two equal pieces. Place a marker in that point. Pull down to tighten the rope and mark your middle. There you go. The next step is to mark our handle's length. The word explains it. A handle is meant to include the length of our hand. So go ahead and make a fist by grabbing the shaft. Do not cover the middle, because that is where the arrow is meant to sit. Your handle has to be below that point. But wait! Handling your bow does not require just a fist's length. You are maneuvering around and using it in more ways. So I'm breaking my wrist like stabbing with a sword. I'm marking the edge of my index finger all the way to the end of my wrist. For me, it's 12 centimeters, slash, 4 inches and 11 sixteenths. Appropriate if you think about it. I started with a 120 and I'm continuing with a 12. The force is with me. <laughs> Mark that length. But remember, everything has to be mirrored on both sides, like the two wings of a hawk. Take the same length and apply it on the other side too. This art needs us to be ambidextrous. These three marked points will be relevant in the next steps.